Hi, welcome. It's time for another children's book reading by a candidate, <clears throat> and I am that candidate. Welcome. My name is Susan Maud Bookser Lahaki, and uh, for short, it's Susan Bookser, and I'm running for, or I'm a candidate for president of the United States. Today we're going to continue with a book that uh, I already started reading, which is what called What is the Supreme Court? It's a penguin book um, from the Who HQ division and uh, Abramson, I'm not sure what that's about. Anyway, supposedly it's a New York Times bestseller series, so you can't go wrong, right? Although we already know that some of the information is not exactly correct. So just to put that in there, especially about the election, but we'll get to that another time. So today we're talking about the Supreme Court. We're learning about, sorry. It's a bit cold here, and you know, we're learning about the judicial system and everything, and so here I am wearing my usual Susan B. Anthony Susan shirt, but I have to take it off now because it's easier to read to you this way. It is cold where I am. It's 38 degrees Fahrenheit, so yeah, I have to stay warm somehow, so I've got my little warm hoodie on and it keeps me nice and warm. Okay, so let's get started chapter two. It's called The First Monday in October. Everything about the U.S. Supreme Court is formal. By tradition, the justices all wear long black silk robes. The Chief Justice sits in the center of the bench. The longest serving justices sit on either side of the Chief Justice, with newer justices at the ends of the platform. Old-fashioned feather quill pens are given to the lawyers who argue cases before the justice justices as souvenirs from the days that all lawyers needed quills and inkwells to take notes. Every year the Supreme Court starts hearing cases on the first Monday in October. It's been that way since 1917. The court's schedule or term ends in June. That's when decisions in the most important cases are announced. Oh, might we be going until June? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Every morning, the justices shake hands before going to the bench. They also do this at the start of private meetings when they discuss and vote on cases presented to them. Shaking hands shows their respect for one another, even when they disagree about cases. An officer of the court calls it into session by saying, the Honorable, the Chief Justice, and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States Oyez, 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 all persons having business before the Honorable and Supreme Court of the United States are admonished to draw near and give their attention to the court, for the court is now sitting, and they say, God save the United States, and this honorable court. Okay, so there is a picture of the justices all shaking hands. Oh, 
Oye, oye. That means hear ye, hear ye. So everybody listen up. And has been a call for silence and attention since medieval times in England and France. There we have it, folks. We're still using England and France as our benchmarks. Most Supreme Court justices are trained as lawyers, but being a lawyer isn't a requirement. In fact, you could become a Supreme Court justice. That's because there are no age or education or work requirements for the position. You don't even have to be a U.S. citizen. That's strange. There is only one rule. The president chooses nominees to the Supreme Court <coughs> and then a majority of the 100 members of the U.S. Senate must approve, so confirm, the nominee. Sometimes the Senate votes a nominee down. In 1789, 12 out of 164 Supreme Court nominees have been rejected by the Senate. Politics is not supposed to influence the justices' decisions. They are supposed to be guided only by the Constitution. A Supreme Court justice is appointed for life. There is only one way to remove a justice, a guilty verdict, in a trial in the Senate. If the senators vote to convict, the justice would be thrown off the court. <clears throat> so far, that has never happened. Justices leave the court after they retire or die. The longest serving associate justice was William O. Douglas, who retired after 36 years, 7 months, and 8 days from 1939 to 1975. Okay, and then it says here an extra, well, I'll show you his picture. So he's the longest serving. Then they have a special note about where the Supreme Court meets. And it's called that, where the Supreme Court meets. The Supreme Court has had its own building located across First Street from the Capitol in Washington, D.C. since 1935. With its Corinthian columns and imposing staircase, the courthouse looks like an ancient Greek temple. However, in the 19th century, the court met on the bottom floor of the Capitol building. Okay, so they used to meet at the Capitol building. This is a rundown Greek temple that they're showing you. And Corinthian columns are pretty columns with little fancy uh, decorations, usually like leaves at the top. Okay, so that is the end of my reading for today. Thank you for stopping by. If you want to find out more about me and my campaign, it's susan4usa.com. And if you like this video, 
please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can be sure to get the next videos coming out, especially the ones for kids. So that is my news for today. Thanks for stopping by and we are finding out together what is the Supreme Court. So thank you. Have a good day. Bye for now.